Hi, in today's video, we are going to be explaining about Workspace Experience Actions Assignments, or better known prior run release as declarative actions. First, we are going to display the different types of action assignments, and then we can identify those in our workspace. And at the end of the video, we will be creating an example of one of them. First things first, we are going to be identify where we can find those actions assignments. So you go to the app navigator and type action and components. And you can see there are five different modules in this part. Uh, those different modules uh, are better known or identified as action models. But in today's video, we are just focusing on the out of the box ones and we are not going to be creating any new action model. So the list of action assignments or the different types of action models are the Field decorators, list actions, related list actions, the contextual side panel, and the related items. The key part here is to identify those action models where we can find those in a workspace experience view. So the first one is the list action. Uh, this type of action is located at the top of a list view in a workspace. So you can see in this example, I'm displaying the list view in the workspace experience. I'm going to display the list of all incidents and the buttons at the top part that says edit button, export and new button. Those are the ones that are list action type. Then when we open a record, you can see the rest of the action assignments. The related item is the one that you are seeing in the screen that is named custom related item. When we click on that tab, you can render any out of the box UI component or any new UI component that can generate value to this record. Uh, the other one is the related list action. This is similar to the list action that we spoke in the previous example. The main difference here is that you can find those in any related list linked to a record so in for example in the task SLA or in child incidents those specific buttons the new remove and add button those are the ones so it is pretty similar like in us 16 like the ui actions associated only to a normal related list moving on then we have the contextual side panel so in this case it is located at the at the bottom right of the screen and, in, and it's normally used to display components like agent assist, attachments, and templates. And the last one is the field decorator. So when we open the details on this record, uh, in this case, in this incident record, we can see an example of it in the color field. Uh, this specific icon, the open record or the magnifying glass on any reference field, uh, those are the cases of, of, of the type of field decorator assign, uh, action assignment. Now we can create a new action assignment. In this case, it will be a list action in the, in the incident list view. So when we click on the button, it is going to update the contact type equal to be as email on any selected incident. So basically, it is a massive update similar to the edit button that you are seeing right now. So first things first, we go again to the app navigator and search action and components. Search for the module named list actions. Go and then and click new. When the form is loaded, then we define the action label and action name. In this case, it will be the contact type as email. Then in this case, they implement the as field because we need to make an update to a record or multiple records selected. We are going to select the server script. The button type, we will, we will leave it as primary, so it will look the same as the new button. In this case, this exact, this exact same new button. On the table, we select to be applied on the incident table. In the view, as a best practice, we can put the workspace uh, as a default view. And then finally, define an order value. We click on save. Then we go and move on to the advanced view related link. Now for this specific case, we want the button to be displayed once a record is selected. 
If not, then we don't display the bottom. To handle that, we go to the conditions tab. Then on the client conditions, you can see a list of multiple possibilities. Those values came from the action model fields. Those are the same records that are displayed in this related list. So, so to this specific case, we are going to be using only the count. That specific count, when it's greater than zero, it is going to be displaying the action assignment. If not, there is not going to be displayed. And finally, we go to the server script tab. And for this example, I will copy pasting this script example that I have. Basically, this script is validating if the assigned to user can write into the record selected. And if that is okay, then we update the contact type of the incident with the email value and some uh, information errors or error messages depending on the case. This uh, server script is pretty similar like a server execution of a UI action in UI 16. So we click on save. Now we can go back again to the agent workspace. Um, for example, when we select this specific incident, 905, we can see there is no defined contact type, but when we click that, you can see now at the top bottom, at the top part of the uh, workspace view that it is displaying the contact type as email action assignment. So it can be one of them or multiple updates in this case. So we are going to be updating five to them. When we click contact type as email, it is going to be displaying an alert on this record updated. And we can see that the record now is with the contact tab as email. So that's all for today. And thank you for watching Action Assignments with Workspace Experience in ServiceNow.